Gen X was my first Media Asia project, and I'm sort of now tied in with Media Asia, working on several projects now. Gen X was the first, and it was sort of Media Asia's experimental film to sort of revitalize the Hong Kong film industry. And so they decided, okay, we're going to give the money and for production, right? Because that's what a lot of Hong Kong films lack is the production quality, and then um, create all these new stars, basically get all these new young people that we don't have to pay so much but that they can perform just as well as anybody else. Basically, over the past like 10 years, it's pretty much the same faces that you, you see doing big budget movies. They need some fresh faces in Hong Kong and uh, somebody um, who uh, fits into that Gen X uh, generation. So I think that's uh, pretty much how you know, they picked me and uh, Nick and Sam. My character was like uh, the, the, the baddie, the bad guy. So I played sort of like a Dilo uh, gangster. And uh, that was the first time I played a bad guy. So it was um, pretty good. Because I, you know, in Hong Kong, it's very easy for like sort of to get stuck in this sort of pop star image of doing like very nice, clean cut boy roles, right? And I was really into trying to do this, trying to get this role. It was good, it was fun being a bad guy because you have like a lot more freedom, a lot less like restraints than you do as, as like a good guy. Benny's really cool, man. He's like, he's like a coach, like a, like a basketball team coach or something like that, where he's like, everyone's, you know, he knows who has the skill to do what, and he lets them do that. And if they try to like, you know, get beyond that, he puts them back into control and says, look, you know, you need to be doing this without like, you know, yelling at people or, 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 or like being a jerk, you know, about it. He's really just like, like one of the guys, pretty much. All the on ground, like fighting, most of them, uh, like we, we pretty much did all of them. It's just uh, like some of the stuff like uh, flying off, uh, you know, like parachuting. Like, we, we wanted to do it, but then no, afterwards they want us to like do circles and, and do all that, and then they wanted to, us to, uh, I mean, they wanted the, the character to jump off a 60-story uh, building, and that's just uh, way above our heads, so uh, we decided not to do it. <laughs> If you look at Gen X, like nobody knows how to fight, but they all look like they know how to fight. So it, it, it totally depends on the kind of smarts of your martial arts choreographer. But of course, it always helps if you can move and you understand the concepts of fighting. When I was in high school, I, I did like uh, karate training and then, you know, that the, the basic, uh, and then I did some uh, kind of gym, gymnastic stuff. So, you know, I'm all right when it comes to, f you know, flexibility. But uh, in terms of real, like, that kind of uh, martial arts fighting, I'm not, you know, that experienced. Sometimes, like a certain kick or a punch makes total sense to you and it seems like a really powerful kick to you, but it looks bad on screen. It looks really, really, like, weak. Whereas, like, another kind of kick will seem really, really weak to you, but it looks beautiful on screen because of the way it's drawn. It's a whole other art form. Prior to uh, shooting the film, you know, we talked to the, the, the stunt guys, the martial art director, about you know how we're gonna achieve what we want to do, so we basically uh, went through like what kind of stuff, and then we, we had practice before we you know before with the actual shooting, so that's pretty much how we got that part done. It's a lot of action. I mean, um, I I fortunately didn't have as much as the other guys. They, there's a lot of injuries and stuff going on on the set. Because everybody, it was cool because there's all these young guys and we're sort of almost like competing to see who could do the, like the craziest, more craziest stunt, right? You know, it's like a bunch of, bunch of like high school buddies, you know, um, doing wild stuff. And, and, and it just get, it would get escalating, escalating, who would do more and more. And as, as you watch the film, it sort of escalates in that level of getting like totally wild in the end, you know, of all these explosions and gunfire and flips and jumps and all that kind of stuff, so. I mean, there was one stunt where you, all of you guys have to run away from a series of explosions. Mm. Can you sort of maybe go over that day for us and tell us how you're all feeling? Um, that day, you know, it was really... Uh, because uh, at first we were going to do, do that scene 
a day before, and then we're all ready for it, you know. But then, I guess it's also, you know, we're pushing for time, so we decided to do it another day, early the next morning. So we came in, and we're all, you know, a little bit nervous, and uh, we're just uh, sitting there, you know, smoking and, uh, and not really talking too much because we were getting ready for uh, the, the like a hundred meter dash or something, you know. They got because they got all these explosives that's uh, set, you know. A, behind us, um, like to the right of us, and then we just have to run. So we practice a few times and then pretty much uh, have to get it right first time. I think Media Asia has, uh, you know, has uh, been quite risky about doing this thing, but finally, you know, it came out of the box office as well. So uh, I'm very happy. You know, I, I hope they are too. It's going. Columbia TriStar bought it. It's going to the states. Um, it's going all over the world now. So uh, it's doing real well. Hopefully, you know, if all goes well, Genesis at Genesis Cop Two will be starting its uh, primary shooting later on, maybe beginning of next year or late this year. Thank <laughs> you.